If you want to learn how to use Kahoot and you want to learn to access the free tool, then this is the video for you. I'll show you how to sign in. I'll show you where the free button is because a lot of people miss it. I'll take you through how to find games and then I'll play a game with you. Really hope you like the video and as always, if you do, please like the video, please comment on the video, please join me on my YouTube channel. Any of those things will really help to push my rankings up which are dropping on YouTube. Let's get started. So I'm going to create an account from the beginning just so you can see the whole processes. So we need to click here on sign up for free. And when you sign up, notice that you've got these options, the type of account. We're going to choose teacher because we're teacher. And then I'm going to choose higher education because that's where I work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in with my Google account. You can just create a user account normally, but I'm going to use my Google to sign in. I've logged in. And what I need to do now is scroll down because I just want to use the free account. And if you come underneath, you'll notice it says basic up to 10 players per game, continue for free. And that's the one that I'm going to use. Now, because you are limited to 10 players uh, in a game, one thing I would suggest is that often you're going to want your students to work in pairs or in groups of three. And that way you can have more players. So you can either create a Kahoot or you could use Kahoot's that have already been made for you. And in this first part, I'm gonna show you how to use Kahoot's that have already been made. And that is easy because you just take a Kahoot and use it with your students. If we go over to Discover, you can see that you've actually got a search bar that here at the top of the place, but you can see there's absolutely tons of different sections. Now I teach English, so I'm gonna search for something for English students, but of course it could be one of many, many topics. So I'm just going to close that down there and I'm going to use this search bar here and I'm going to look for, um, let's call it uh, English language present simple and hopefully we can find some activities that are going to practice the present simple in English and then absolutely masses of games come up and you can see that many of these are free. So this is the best way to start and let's start by actually playing a game and just seeing how it works. Now, if we just look through here, we can see that they're free. We can see how many questions there are. And what we can do is we can have a quick look at how the game's going to work. So if we click on this, we can see here that we've got various sentences in the present simple. Now, we need to see what the students have to answer. Well, if we click here on show answers, it shows us that we're going to have three choices and the students will have to choose which is the correct answer. So we get a real variety of activity types as well. For example, if I click on this one here, just to show you, this one, the students actually have to write in the answer, okay? So it isn't a choice of them choosing one, two, three, or four, or one, or two, or true or false, but simply the write in the answer. And as I said, there is also the option of true or false. So if I show more results and just show you this one, and you really do see how many free games there are, then notice that this one, if we show the answers, the students choose true or false. Or in fact, this teacher has mixed up a variety of different question types. So it's worth looking through. And remember, as soon as you find a game that you like, the button that you're gonna need to click on is this one here. So I'm gonna choose a game now and show you exactly how to play the game. So I'm going to choose this one here. So I'm going to click on present simple. The reason I like this is because if I show you the answers, then there are actually four options for each question. Now, it's always a good idea to look through. Uh, notice also that you get information about which is the correct answer, as well as how long the students have got to answer. So let's play this game. So obviously, I didn't have to create it or anything. All I need to do is to host live, okay? So we can start playing this game now with our students. So we click on the button. It's gonna open up a screen. We just gotta wait for it to load. Now the game has loaded, okay? And we're gonna play in classic mode, okay? Up to 10 players. So click on the start button. So just click here. I'm just keeping everything selected as normal. Start the game now. We want the students to log in and to join. So they're going to need to log in of, on a variety of ways. Now, the most obvious way for them to log in is to simply point their telephones at the screen and use the QR code. I'll just turn the music off. Okay, the music, I, can't, I kind of quite like the music, but anyway. Or the students can also go to kahoot.it 
and just put in that number. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna log in on my phone and I'm gonna log in on my computer so that we can see both the teacher view and the student view. So I've just logged in on my phone. All I did was point my phone at the screen and it just asked me for a name. I've put my name in and now I'm logged in. But let's log in now on this computer using another browser so we can see exactly what it looks like if we go to www.carhoop.it and put this number in. So let me show you that now. So if a student's gonna log in on their computer, they would come over to carhoot.it, write in that number, click on enter. It's gonna ask for a nickname, I'm gonna call myself Tom, and then click on okay. And now Tom is also logged in and we can see exactly what Tom can see, okay? And if we go back to the teacher view, let's just see what the teacher sees. And obviously you should be projecting this onto the screen so the students can look at their phones or look at their computers, but also look at the screen, they can now see that they're logged in so let's start the game just a super quick break from the video just to say if you do like the video then please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com there are loads more free videos on the site I specialize in making videos that show language teachers how to use technology one other thing if you sign up to the newsletter at the moment then you will get a free 14 part course where I show you some of the key technologies that we can use in language teaching. There really are no tricks, nearly everything that I highlight is free. That was all, let's get back to the video. So as the teacher, all I need to do is to click on start and the game will begin. Just takes a few seconds. Title comes up on the screen, we get a count in and then the first question comes up onto the screen and the teachers need to, or the students need to answer by clicking, and they basically got four options. Now it's important that you understand you must project those questions on the screen because the students are only gonna see the four buttons for the answers. So if I jump over now and we look at Tom, and let's see what Tom can see, you can see that he has to choose, but he needs to look at the screen to see which question and then decide which one he wants to answer in. So there Tom's answered the question, and actually Tom got the answer wrong, and it gives him immediate feedback, which is really, really important for Tom as well. Now, we as the teacher control the game. So what we can now see on the screen is that the two students have done the question and they got it wrong. But what we can do now is click on the next button and move on. It showed us that both students got it wrong. So we click on next. We can see a summary after question one here. Neither student got the answer right. We click on next and the next question will appear on the screen and the student's screen will also update immediately. And now again, the students have got four options. So if we jump back now and let's have a look at what Tom sees now, and this time let's get the answer correct. So we're gonna jump back onto Tom. And this time we're gonna click on the right answer. And if Tom, if we click on the right answer, Tom gets told that the answer is correct. The other student has also answered on their telephone. And if we come back now and look at the teacher view, we can see now this time that both students got the answer correct. And if we click on the next button, we can see that the score updates and Russell, who was answering on his telephone, is getting a little bit more, is, is a little bit in front. We click on next, the next question appears. And of course the students again, their screen will update. And again, they will be able to choose which is the correct answer. So if we come back to Tom, again, Tom's gonna click on the answer. Again, Tom chooses the correct one. So they get another 777 points. And if we come back to the Stu teacher view, we can now see that the two students, the one on the phone and the one on the uh, browser have both answered the question. They both got it correct. We can now see that with the updated score, Russell is still beating Tom. And let's click on next now and the next question will come up. And that's the way the game works. So I'm gonna show you how to end the game now and look at the kind of information that you get afterwards. But one thing, another very popular gaming website is called bluekit.com. It's very similar to Kahoot, but it actually gives you more for free. And you might wanna look at that. And I'm gonna put a video now on the screen that shows you how to use Blookit. Now, if you wanna end the game early, just click down here, scroll down and click on end now. Okay, and that will end the game. And if we end the game, we'll get the podium, we'll see who's the winner, who comes second, who comes third, 
and we can see and all of this of course you should be projecting onto the screen and the winner is actually it was me uh, that was a bit lucky and that is how Kahoot works in its basic form uh, remember that you've only got a maximum of 10 players in the free game now a useful button to click on now is to view the summary because it will give you a breakdown of the answers to the questions what students got right what students got wrong etc that's a really good place to go once you've done an activity and you can see the options on the right hand side Okay, really hope you liked that video. And if you did, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Make use of all the drop down menus at the top, loads of content, and there's also some content on the front page that you can access. If you wanna keep up with my work, sign up to the newsletter. You get updated with all the latest videos and the free webinars that we organize. And of course, part of that as well is the 14 part video course, where I basically highlight the most popular technologies on the website. And nearly all of the technologies that I highlight are free or have a free option. I send you a video every three or four days and that can be really useful if you kind of want to boost your general knowledge of using technology in language teaching and language learning. If you'd like to do live training with me, then join me on Patreon. If you join me on Patreon, you get access every month to three additional videos. And these videos cover technologies that I often don't cover on YouTube. There's no advertisements. And I go into more detail around the ideas. So these are very much practical videos for giving teachers ideas of how they can use technology, teaching online or teaching in the classroom. Apart from that, of course, you get the live training with me. We meet once a month online. We look at one, normally just one technology, but sometimes two. And we do lots of activities with those technologies so that we get really familiar with them. Now, there's about 80 people on Patreon, but most people just accept the recording and don't join me live. But there's normally a group of about 10 or 12 people. And that's really interesting if you want practical ideas and you really want to build up your confidence with using the technologies. The other thing, if you join me on Patreon, you will get at this moment access to all the back dated content. So if you pay your $6 a month, not only will you get access to the new videos, but in fact, you'll get access to all the many videos that are already up on Patreon. So you might like to think about joining me on Patreon and joining me for live training.